Today we're going to be editing dog photos. In our last video, we photographed the dogs downtown. Now I'm going to be editing one of the pictures from that session so you can see how our workflow is. So right now I'm in Adobe Bridge and I have selected the photo that I want to edit. So I'm going to double click that to open it into Camera Raw. Okay, now that I'm in Camera Raw, I can make my adjustments for the image. So I'm going to brighten it up with just a little bit and I'm going to bring the highlights down and the shadows up and I'm going to warm it up a little bit too. Just a little bit. We don't want to make the dog's fur look yellow. We'll brighten it up a little bit more but again we don't want to blow out that fur. Okay so that looks good to me so I'm going to go ahead and say open image. This will bring us into Photoshop where we will do the rest of our adjustments. So now we are in Photoshop and we can begin editing. First of all, I see this thing on the bottom of the frame that I don't like. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to crop it a little bit tighter. It seems to be some extra room on that side anyways. So I'll just center up the dogs a little bit better, make them more centered in the frame. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if I like seeing off the edge of the building. So I'll just bring that in again and center that up to what I think looks good. And that's using the crop tool. If you look over on the left hand side, you'll see it's a few down from the top. So I'm going to say OK to apply those corrections. Now um, our dog's faces are dirtier than usual. <laughs> we like to keep them pretty clean, but over the summer they kind of went to town licking plates. So their faces are a little bit more stained than usual. So we're just going to clean that up real quick. I'm using the um, healing brush and the healing brush works great sometimes you can just paint over the area that you want to change and it will take samples from the areas around where you're painting and figure out what you're trying to get it to do sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does and it's absolutely great when it does so that's always my first go-to tool. I'm just going to clean this up here. That's looking pretty good. A little bit of lag on my computer today. I'm not sure why it doesn't want to run as fast as Okay, Paddington is looking pretty good. Um, now I'm going to take a look at Muggsy. Muggsy has some little areas that we could clean up as well. Just paint away anything that we don't like. Okay. Little dirty beast boy. Alright, now um, there's some other areas that I see that I want to fix but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different method um, okay, I don't like what I did right there let me go back in history and undo that okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, clone stamp tool and I'm going to bring that opacity down to 30 percent and I'm going to put it on lighten this way, wherever I'm sampling from and then painting on top of, it's only going to lighten the image. 
So I want to get rid of some of these dark marks, but I don't want to mess with the rest of the image. So I'm just sampling from a good spot and then pulling the light color on top of the dark areas. And because I have it selected to lighten, it will not darken anywhere that I'm painting. It will only lighten the area. And then there's this little chunk in here. I'm going to fill that in a little bit and go over this as well. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Muggsy. And I'm only working at 30%, so it's a very low opacity. It's not super strong. I can build it up without going overboard. I can just resample. And again, it's not going to darken my image at all. It's only going to lighten. this in a little bit and over here okay so now they're still not perfect but they look a lot better than they used to and we can see that over in the history palette, we can see what we did so far. So this is when I opened the image, and then this is right now. So it's already been a big improvement. The next thing I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna put a hue saturation layer. So if we look over at the bottom right corner in the layers palette, there's this little drop down. It's like a circle, half is black, half, and half is white that will bring up your layer masks. So I'm gonna go into hue saturation and what I wanna do is bring the saturation down about 30 and we'll bring the lightness up about seven. And then since that applied it to the whole image, we don't want it on the whole image. So we're gonna come back over to, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see the paint bucket we'll get a black paintbrush, a black paint bucket, and we'll fill in the whole mask black. That will hide everything that we just did. Now we choose a paint brush and we want it to be a white paint brush. And then we can just paint right on top of the areas that we want to desaturate and brighten. So just go around painting everything and I'm at 100% right now. I'm just gonna go and paint out all the areas that I don't like the color of. Okay that's looking pretty good and then so for Muggsy, I think Muggsy looks good. Um, Paddington, on the other hand, has some areas that I still don't like. And so in order not to affect Muggsy, what I'm gonna do is get a new adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go to Hue Saturation again, get the new layer. Uh, this time I'm gonna say minus 15 and maybe plus five. We're gonna get our black brush just like we did before our bucket. We're going to color the whole thing black and then get a white paint brush and paint in those areas that need some extra attention. There we go. That blends a lot better than it did before. Okay, so now the boys are looking pretty good. Um, there's one thing that I would like to try to fix. And that is one of Muggsy's eyes is a little bit covered up. So I'm gonna see if I can do an eye transplant with the eye that's showing better. So now I have the lasso tool. 
I'm going to just make a nice big lasso around Muggsy's eye. Make sure I'm on the background layer because that's the area that I want to copy from. I'm also going to go up to um, Selections, Modify, Feather. And I'm going to modify my selection with a 15 pixel feather. That way it's not a hard edge, it's a soft edge. Now I'm going to copy and paste. All right, and then since the eye is on the other side of his head, what we're going to do is transform it. We're going to flip horizontal. Okay, now all we got to do is line up his eye. And I'm going to go over to the layers palette and put this layer at 50% so I can kind of see where his other eye was. Looks like it was probably right about there. And now I'm going to change this back to 100. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I just want to cover up a little bit of that possibly. So I'm going to go to layer new um sorry layer layer mask and i'm going to reveal all then i'm going to get my black brush and i'm going to paint away just a little bit more of that layer okay there we go now you can see mugsy's eye that looks a lot better to me Okay, so let's zoom out to see the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and do a flatten. And a save. Now that our photo is saved, we're going to make it look a little bit better by running an action on it. Actions are a recorded set of tasks that you can play back to batch your files. So I have this action. It's from Paint the Moon, Grace Collection, Awaken, and it's called Opulent. And I run this action on all of my photos. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play for you over here in the actions palette and you can see what it does. So you'll notice as it's working, it's adding layers for me so that I don't have to individually add them myself. Now, when it first gets put on the photo, this is way too much. But with the opacity over here, you can lower it to an amount that you think looks good. So I'm going to go to probably 50% or so. Then I'm going to open it up and we can see the individual layers that it's added. So if we look through them, you can see there's brightened shadows, clarity adds a little bit of pop in the details, spotlight and edge, color boost gives you color, warmth gives you warmth, a deep pop is some contrast. We got intensity, that's just adding some darkness around the edges. Depth is another bit of contrast and pop. Light and blacks helps you open those shadows up a little bit and curves is again, more contrast. Then there's these optional layers that come turned off and you can turn them on if you want to. So um, I'm going to turn on the brighten and I'm going to bring it down a little bit because that's too much. Um, I also feel like the dogs have been made a little bit pink by the color pop. So I'm going to turn on the soften reds. That will take out some of the red. And by the way, this is great for skin tones if you're shooting people. It just really smooths it out. Um, I'm going to take a look at the color because I want to make sure it's not too much. I think we're all right there. Okay, so now that I've made my adjustments and close that back up, and you can see before and after, before and after. 
So I really like running actions on my photos. It saves me a lot of time. I don't have to go in and make all those individual adjustments myself. I can just have, I can just have an action that does it all for me. So there we go. There's our final photo.